Welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Tonight we're continuing the tale of Myra and the online school for adventuring. Myra and her friends have at long last found the missing shears of the fates, but they're on the run with the string demon hot on their tail. Can they escape? Listen and find out. I hope you enjoy the story. Myra ran as fast as she could through the woods. She was trying to keep Veer and Doa in sight in front of her. Antoine and Chelsea were running next to her, and Tweedy was bringing up the rear. Myra divided her time between trying to keep up with the deer who were far faster than they had any right to be. I mean, they were in completely human form. They should not be so fast. But she was just having to run her fastest flat-out sprint, and she kept at the same time glancing back to see if the string demon was following them. She glanced up to see if she could see Willow above, but the canopy was too thick. She saw Veer and Doa suddenly start to run towards the right, and she was hopeful that perhaps they had seen the scout deer with her other friends, but when she glanced back, she saw what she had dreaded most, movement up in the tree canopy, and she could see the multi-limbed shape of the string demon leaping from branch to branch. It must have gotten away from the tree, she shouted. It's following us. She saw Veer glance back and then forward, and his speed seemed to increase even more Now he was slowly pulling away from them. We can't keep up, Veer, she shouted. Veer and Doa looked at each other and then glanced back, Myra also. Despite them running flat out, the string demon was definitely gaining on them. All right, said Veer. Split up. Half of you with Doa, half of you with me. Myra and Chelsea followed Doa as she suddenly turned sharply towards the left as Veer and Antoine and Tweedy turned toward the right. Their pace did not slacken, though. Myra glanced back. The string demon was still following them. I think it's after me, she said. Doa looked back. It can't get the shears, she said. And it can't know which of us have them. How could it know, said Myra, unless it can sense them or something. All right, said Doa. We've got to split up. Try to draw them away from Myra. Myra, Chelsea, and Doa ran a few more steps, and then Myra continued to run straight ahead as Doa and Chelsea split off to the left and the right. Myra concentrated on dodging under tree limbs and over roots as she ran helter-skelter, wondering how she was ever going to find her way back to her friends, how she was ever going to find her way out of the forest. She glanced back. The string demon, she did not see it. She slowed just a bit, but was still running. She thought she saw a flash of movement up in the canopy and ran faster. She ran until her arms and legs ached. She ran until her lungs felt like they would burst. She ran until she could not run any more, and putting one foot in in front of another, she tripped over a tree root and went sprawling on her face. She rolled over onto her back immediately, the daggers flying from the sleeves into her hands. If she was going to go down, she was going to go down fighting. She lay there trying to control her breathing. She did not see any movement up in the canopy. She was quiet. She counted to a hundred in her head, her breathing gradually slowing, before she tucked the knives back into her sleeves and slowly sat up looking around. The relief that the string demon did not appear to be following her was immediately replaced by the realization that she was in the middle of the forest, alone. She did not know where her friends were. She did not know where the string demon was. She had no idea how she was going to get home. She knew that the temple was west of the school, and so... She tried to make out which direction the sun was in. It was now 
late in the afternoon, and the light had started to turn orange. She finally caught a glimpse through the tree canopy of the sun. It was even farther down towards the horizon than she had realized. She put her back to it and began to walk east. There was no way she was going to be able to find her friends in the forest by herself. She was just going to have to keep traveling east and hope that they would be waiting for her when she arrived back at the school. She walked as the light turned from orange to gray, and then the gray dimmed to the deepest of twilight, and then, when she could no longer see to put one foot in front of the other, she stopped. She listened for a moment. Even with full moonlight, under the canopy, it was definitely not safe to travel. She would twist an ankle, and without the guidance of the sun, she might very well be walking in circles. And so she looked around until she found a pine tree with branches that drooped toward the ground. She crawled up underneath those low branches and onto the soft bed of pine needles covering the forest floor. She put her back to the trunk and curled up in a ball, and then after a moment, every part of her aching, she reached into her pack and got out her bedroll and a few of the slices of dried meat and bread and cheese. She ate, and then she lay down on her bedroll, listening to the sounds of the forest. She did not know how long she had been asleep when the sound of the singing woke her. Her eyes popped open, and the first thing that struck her after her surprise that singing had woken her was the sort of yellowish-green light filtering through the branches of the pine tree. As soon as she was fully awake, though, She reached into her backpack, got the remains of the cheese, and jammed it into her ears as hard as she could until the sound of the singing was muffled so that she could make out no words. And then, after checking that her daggers were up her sleeves, she crawled out from underneath the pine tree. The shimmering shape of the fae, Dolores, faced her. Myra said, you can stop singing, I can't hear you. It will do you no good. The shape of Dolores dissolved into its thousand little flying fairies, each with their glow. They began to move toward her. Myra reached into her pocket and pulled out the shears. She said, stay back, these are magic, and I wager they can hurt even you. She could tell even through her cheese that the singing had stopped. The little fay stopped moving towards her. She dug the cheese earplug out of one ear and said, Look, I'm no easy victim for you. She said, I have these. And as she held them, she noticed that in the faint glow of the fay, she could make out just a faint line coming from each of them, like a string. And she thought, Huh, I wonder what would happen if I snipped those strings with these shears. But she said no such thing. She said, I have become lost in your woods, but I am a guest of the deer people and under their protection. The face said nothing for a moment, and then in the one as many voice of Dolores said, But your dear friends are not here, are they? You are lost in our woods, and so you are our rightful prey. I will not be easy prey for you, said Myra. Do you recognize these? We do, said Dolores. Then you know what they can do. They could put an end to you, said Myra, crossing her fingers that perhaps the fay would believe her, even if it wasn't actually true, since she wasn't at all sure. She said, and you know, the string demon haunts your woods. 
I have taken these, and my friends and I are here in order to put an end to it. It will eventually come for you, too, if it is not stopped. Dolores said nothing for a moment, and then they said, We know it. It is a great evil in our forest, and it would eventually pose a risk to us. But tonight we hunger. The string demon has all your other friends, and you are the only one left to us. Well, I am not for you, said Myra. Instead, why don't you show me where the string demon has my friends, and I will free them, and we will put an end to it before it puts an end to you, and you will not incur the wrath of the deer for attacking their guest. Dolores was silent for a long time. Myra wondered if she should be sticking her earplug back in under the glare of those hundreds of tiny glowing eyes. But after what seemed like forever, they turned as one and said, We will show you where it has your friends. Follow. And Myra, still tired after only a half night's sleep, but energized with the possibility that she might now be able to rescue her friends from a fate she did not wish to contemplate, crawled under the tree retrieved her backpack, and then followed the glowing forms of Dolores into the dark night of the woods. And that is the end for tonight. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's show, but questions and running commentary were supplied by my children. The theme music was created by Brandon Thompson, and our wonderful logo was designed by Silas Swindelin. If you know someone who might enjoy the show, please tell them about it. Do you want more stories? You can now subscribe to the show and help pick a new story for me to tell every month. The show's website is storiesforwonderfulchildren.com. Until next time, I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story.